Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today we're actually going to be talking about site costs. So if you are in the process of figuring out if you're going to build a custom home or you're possibly maybe buying land and you're trying to figure out, hey, what do I need a budget to actually develop this lot so I can build on it? Or what am I going to spend to actually develop the lot that I already own? And then what's going to be left over in my budget to build my house? That's what we're going to cover today. So we're, when, when we're done here, we're going to go through a number of different items that you need to consider Whenever you're building, as far as a site cost go, we're going to go through a range on what those costs are. So you have a good understanding and you can put a budget together and be able to evaluate uh, what you're going to be spending on site costs. And then ultimately, when you're done, you know, what the total budget would be when you're done building the house you want to build. So I'm going to go line by line on these items and then we'll go over the range first. And then what I'm going to go over is I'm going to actually go, hey, these are some of the considerations that could change these numbers and you want to look out for these while you're actually going through your due diligence process and you're figuring these things out. So, okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the grading. The grading, is typically you want to pull against somewhere between ten dollars to $30,000. So on the lower end, what you can expect is if you had a lot, maybe that had a house that maybe what had a, maybe had a home on it before, so possibly some of these burn down lots have a situation like this, existing pad, maybe there was a demolition done, on the, the, the foundation that was there, but it needs to be over excavated and then recompacted, you're gonna be down lower, close to this $10,000 range potentially. It could also be if you have a nice flat lot, like in a subdivision that you buy, maybe it's a holdout lot that uh, never got built on for a long time, you could potentially get that kind of a price point on a lot like that as well. But as soon as you get outside of flat lots, existing lots, you're going to be pushing up higher into that price point. Some of the considerations uh, that you want to look at is you want to look at, hey, how long is my driveway getting in off of the road? Is that going to be super, super long? And am I going to have an expense with the uh, grading getting to that pad? Also, you want to look out for a lot of rock. So do I have a bunch of rock that I'm going to have to blast? That could go way up if you, ha if you have to do a lot of blasting. So you want to look at that. The other thing is import on your dirt. So you want to make sure, hey, do I have, can I get a balanced pad out of this? If you have a pad that has a ton of rock in it, sometimes you might have to bring dirt in, right? So you, you just need to look at the pad, really get with a grading contractor and look at, you know, what is it, what, what are the potential pitfalls of this lot and what should I be concerned with on this lot? So, so that's grading. So anywhere from ten dollars to $30,000 is kind of a typical range, but you can go way higher than that, way higher. I mean, like, 100,000, 200,000, it could go way high. So just make sure that you're really looking at that grading. It's really important to get a grading professional out to look at that property with you in the initial stages of looking at it. Okay, so next thing is BMPs. So these are BMPs, is short for best management practices. That's like stormwater management. So this is going to be erosion control during the actual construction process. So your control, depending on the lot, this can vary significantly, and it depends really where you're at. So like if you're in, say, like a city of Poway, they're, they really are sticklers on this. You want to make sure you have more money in there, depending on the area you're at, if you're in the city area, whereas if you're in the county, you're like up in Julian or somewhere like that, not going to be the same. So it's going to be, a, you know, a lot less uh, enforced it, it, up in those areas. It's not really as critical because uh, it's you get these big lots not running out on the streets, you dirt running out. So this could be anywhere from two to $10,000 for BMPs. Just make sure you are uh, adjusting that based on the area that you're actually in, okay? So next thing is, we're gonna talk about, this is, this is gonna be specific if you do not have city water. So this is if you're in a kind of a rural area and you're in a, you're gonna have to drill a water well. So water well, $25,000 to $60,000. This can, uh, so we're talking about water well, storage tank, and pumps. So you could have a, you could have some of these and not all of these, but if you are specifically, you have to have a water well, it's going to depend on the depth of that well. So you should be talking to a well driller at the very front, at the front end of this, at the same time here, we're talking about doing all this other due diligence, like with a grading contractor, and ask him, hey, do you know, uh, you know, guy? Do you know what the average depths these wells are at in this area? Maybe this area is like known. This is a super good deal in this lot because every well in the area is actually dry. So make sure you're checking. Going, hey, is there is there good water in this area? Typically, what are the depths of these wells? So you know if you're you're going 400 feet or if you're going a thousand feet, and you got to budget more money 
for the drilling on these water wells. So make sure you check with a, a, a good well driller that's very experienced in the area that you're actually going to be building or buying this lot. Okay. So storage tanks, if you do not have a hydrant that is close enough to the, uh, to the house, to the driveway, you are going to have to put in a storage tank, typically 10,000 gallons. If you have a smaller house, it be 5,000. And these are going to be steel storage tanks. These have really gone up in price. So the steel is, has gotten significantly higher in cost. So you're going to be spending money on your storage tanks. You're also going to have a uh, pump. So if you have a water, if you drill in a well, you're going to have a submersible pump down in the well. And then you're going to have your pressure tanks outside of that. And then you're also going to have your booster pump that will pressurize the house or any landscaping systems that you would have from there. So those are all, depending on how much of this you have to put in and how deep the well is, that's going to drive that price to $25,000. To sixty thousand dollars, there are instances where you have a water meter on the property, and you don't have a hydrant close enough. So the county fire department will require you to put in a storage tank that does not have to have booster pumps that pump to the house. It just has to have a gravity-fed hydrant that's close enough to the driveway, and then that allows you to not have to put in. Not you're not drilling a water well necessarily, but that's only if you're on city you have city water available. But you need a hydrant, and you can opt to not put a hydrant in. in instead, you put in a ten thousand gallon water tank. So that would keep you down closer to this twenty five thousand dollar range if that was the case. Okay. So next thing is septic system. So the septic systems. This is for a standard system. This one here. So thirteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars. So depending on the size of the system, this is going to depend on the amount of bedrooms. So if you have don't, uh, maybe a two-bedroom house, you're going to have less, bed, less requirement as far as the size of those leach field than if you have a five- or six-bedroom house. It's based off the amount of bedrooms. So standard system, smaller system, could be anywhere down in the $13,000 range. It could go up to 20 depending on the amount of bed, the size of that system. So when, you get, when you're looking at land, you want to find out what, if it's had a perk test done on it. The perk test will tell you how fast the water will actually seep down into the ground, soak down into the ground. They'll drill a borehole and they actually test this, how fast it goes down. The faster the perk rate, the less uh, leach lines you would typically need, which then decreases the cost of the system. If you have a, a very high perk rate, or it's, it's the, the minutes are high as far as it actually going down into the soil, then you're going to have a larger system. So some lots do not have perk rates or perk tests that have been done on them. There is a way to get away from that in the county. Uh, you can actually uh, request that they look at the adjacent lots that are touching your property, and they will look at the take the worst case scenario on the perk rate, and they'll base your system off that size. Sometimes that makes sense if it if it's uh, a, they're good rates in the area. That can make sense. You could spend anywhere from maybe thirty five hundred bucks or so. For a perk test, 3,500 to 4,500. So if the system is not massively bigger because you didn't have a perk test done, then it might make sense just to get that, just to actually go with the adjacent, uh, the readings off the adjacent lots instead of actually paying it for a perk test to be done. So that's something to consider on the septic systems. The another thing on the septic system is sometimes you'll get into an area where you don't have enough area to get a standard system in or you have high groundwater. In those instances, you're going to have to put in an ATU, which is a septic system that is so like an alternate alternative septic system. And when you do that, you're going to spend quite a bit more money. So those, those smaller systems can cost anywhere. The smaller of those ATU systems can be anywhere around thirty thousand dollars. You can go upwards of fifty thousand dollars. So make sure. You are, you're really looking at this. If there has there been an approved septic layout on this lot prior, what are the perk rates? Is there any issues with high groundwater in this area? Do I have enough room to get a septic system in? So if you need to get one of these done, you're going to have to have a septic engineer involved and the septic engineer will need to draw up all of the specs that need to go into the county, the layout, and he'll have to, he's got, there's quite a bit of work that goes into that. So that'll end up costing anywhere from four to six thousand dollars typically to do that. Okay. So next thing is your solar system. So these are all required now. We, the, the typical size on a 
smaller custom home uh, is you're going to spend somewhere around $20,000 kind of on the lower end of that. It could be a little bit lower than that, depending on the size of the system. Sometimes they're about 3.3 kW is, is roughly where they're coming in at as far as the size. And then you can go up from there. So you can go as large as you want to zero out your meter, depending on the size and, uh, and the electrical load that's on that house or the electrical usage that's on that house. You, if you do a ground mount system too, that could be, it's normally about 30% more than if you're actually doing like a roof mount system. So something to consider too. So this upper limit would be, we're doing some ground mount, but we've had projects where the solar system is over $100,000. So it just depends on the size of what you're trying to do with that solar system. And if you want to have any backup generators as well, you got to put money in there for that too. That's, those can be ten dollars to $20,000 easily. Uh, that's and that's not, not actually mentioned here. Okay, so the next thing that you want to consider is your utilities. And this is one that can just vary so, so much. So what the price we have here on this is $15,000, $50,000. And that's that's just a basic range depending on what, you know, you could, some of these lots, the power could cost 50000 just by itself. So you really got to look at this as far as whenever you get in here and you're looking at the, the actual, uh, you know, cost to extend the utilities or, where are they coming from? So utilities, what they what I would consider utilities be your electric, uh, natural gas, if it's available, propane, if natural gas is not available, uh, you got your sewer connection and then your water line. So the sewer would be like, hey, I, I'm not on a septic. I'm going to be connecting my sewer. That doesn't include the fees to actually pay to actually get connected to the sewer. That's just once I get, I pay the uh, I pay the, maybe the water district or whoever the municipality is that's handling that uh, for their fee. Maybe it's $20,000. Then I come back here and now I got to actually trench over to my house and get it in there or cut the street and then put it in there. So those are going to be additional costs. This can get extensive depending on the amount of road work you have to do to do the sewer tie-in. A lot of times you'll have a lateral already that's stubbed out in the curb and that helps. So that helps in the cost. Same thing with the, uh, the water line. You'll get a water meter. And then you have to transfer the water meter over to the house. So depending on how far that is, it could be 15 feet. It could be 500. So you got to really look at, you know, the cost to trench that. Now, that's also, even with your water well up here, that doesn't include trenching to the house. That's just getting the water well and the tanks in. You actually got to trench from there over to the house and get everything tied in so that you have to have your water line cost. And then depending on how far your pump system is away from the house, that's going to be, uh, a significant could be a significant amount of money uh, to get it over there. Propane is not too bad typically because propane is only required to be like 10 feet from the house, uh, mat, you know, minimum. And then it, the same thing from the property lines and like permanent structures. So this could be pretty minimal. Propane is not too bad. It's normally a couple of grand or less. You could typically get that done. So electric though, make sure you check the SDG&E. They take a long time to get back to you these days. So it's something you want to start right at the very beginning when you're getting your getting everything done with your lot as far as due diligence and starting the process, make sure you get contact with them and get a service order started. So, and you're going to need an address in order to do that. Okay. So next thing on here is the, we're going to talk about the area drain. So this is something we'll typically throw in. It's not, it's not uh, needed on every property. So this is around your house. So if you've got a, fl a bigger pad that's flat, yeah, you don't have a lot of drainage that's happening on your pad. We'll throw in somewhere between four to $10,000 just for area drains, for trenching around the house, and then putting those drains in so you can get the water off the pad. So that's an expense you want to consider uh, putting in the budget. Other thing to consider is your concrete driveway. So if you are, whenever we're figuring your build costs, we'll typically include the flower, concrete flower work that's underneath the covered porch areas. And those are considered, you know, figured into the building costs. When we get outside of that and we're doing our driveways that are sometimes can be very long uh, and sometimes they're not, but you got to calculate out, you know, I'm going to be spending somewhere roughly around $9 a square foot based on the size of your driveway that you got to get in uh, to your home. So make sure you consider that once you have an idea where the house is going to sit, calc out the length of your driveway, typically minimum 16 feet for the fire department. And then times your length, plus you're going to have to have a uh, turnaround typically. And then whatever else is around the driveway to make it flow well for your house. All right. 
So next thing is asphalt driveway. So if you go to asphalt versus concrete, typically the grading, the prep work, and actual laying the asphalt is anywhere from about five to six dollars a square foot. So it's a little bit less than actually putting in a concrete driveway. So you can uh, maybe put concrete just right in front of your, actually right in front of your house, maybe you're in your garage area, and then you would asphalt the rest of it and you'd save a few bucks doing that. So that's something you can calculate that out based on the exact same thing we're talking about on the concrete driveway. All right, so then something to consider uh, when you are calculating out your driveway surface, and this also applies to the house, is the amount of impervious area. So there is a thing called a PDP, uh, and if you exceed 5,000 square feet on the driveway by itself, and or a combination of 10,000 square feet on a lot, currently, right now, of impervious area, so that's they calculate in the roof of the house, all the covered areas of the house, plus any concrete flour you had that was in, that was impervious, and then in your driveway it's impervious, and then they would uh, require you to have an engineer draw up a PDP, which is a plan development plan, and then you would have a, then you would also have to be required to do bioretention basins, and the bioretention basins are going to be they're essentially a filter so the water that runs off of these impervious areas flows into these these basins and then they catch the water and filter it out and then drains it drains out from there those can run between hiring an engineer to do this and actually doing the bioretention basins for a house it could be worth 50 to 100 thousand dollars so that's significant so make sure that you're looking at that uh, whenever you're doing the calculations on your what you're wanting to build Plus, the length of the driveway is a big driver of that. So, and also depending on the size of the home. So that if the house is ten thousand feet all by itself, then that's you're you're going to be doing one. So you just got to make sure you calculate that into the budget. So, all right. So if we want to recap this, and you kind of, I mean, there's a bunch of different costs here altogether. You wouldn't have the septic and the sewer costs, you know, in in each one or, or the two different septic types of septic systems. You only have one of them. But you looking at this, you're going to spend somewhere between a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars on site costs. Tip: You might get a little bit less than a hundred thousand dollars, but most of the time you're going to be spending at least a hundred k and upwards, you know, of two hundred thousand dollars, depending on what you're actually dealing with. So it can go way higher than that too. So just make sure that due diligence you're doing, on, uh, you know, on the front end is done very well and very detailed. So um, yeah, so that's that's site cost. So I hope that. Gives you a good idea of some of the things uh, you need to figure cost-wise, and some of the re you know things that could possibly get to come up to help you kind of head that off and make sure that you can budget well for your uh, for your buying your land um, and also building your house. So make sure too that when you're looking at your land and it looks like a good deal, maybe hundred, maybe it's maybe it's only hundred grand. Make sure you're you're adding these costs back in and going, yeah, it's hundred grand, but it's gonna take me three hundred to develop this thing. This lot's actually gonna be maybe into this $400,000 and see if that works. So it's a good way to look at the value of the land and evaluate, you know, if you're paying the right amount for it. So, all right, so I hope that helps you. Hey, it was great talking to you today. If you have not already, subscribe to our channel here on The Real Property Show. If you're looking for more information on building a custom home, building an ADU, remodeling your home, or actually buying land, make sure you go to our website at tfgonline.com Again, it's tfgonline.com. Find the resources page at the very top of the menu. Click on that. That'll give you access to a ton of our resources. You're going to find pricing guides for custom homes. You're going to find a pricing guide for ADU. You're going to see pricing guide for remodeling your home. You're also going to get our step-by-step -step checklist for buying land that you can use to actually get it done. So go there. You can also find a very, very comprehensive FAQ section in there that will give you access to all of the, the content that we actually produce in these videos and in our actual podcast. And we take and we turn that into a text format and we put it in our FAQ section and it's all broke up in different sections to help you find what you need to have there. So, all right. You can also visit us uh, on any podcast platform and actually subscribe to The Real Property Show and you can get weekly content that we put out there. So, all right, it was wonderful, wonderful talking to you and have an excellent rest of your day.